You can now get a 30-day trial to experience The Athletic for free. Visit the link in the description below to try it now. Hello there, Newcastle have signed a bunch of players. This is what they might look like now. We're going to look at the signings that they've made, uh, which include Dan Byrne, Matt Target, who's on loan from Aston Villa, Bruno Guimaraes from uh, Lyon, Chris Wood, who talked about him in another video, and also Kieran Trippier. But there's one player in particular who is very, very exciting, and it's this guy here. So we're going to look at why in particular he is a really good signing, but also why Dan Byrne. You might not think of him as being a good signing, but he really is. So we're going to look at why that is, starting with uh, why they signed these players in the first place. Newcastle have many problems, or they had, and the biggest of those, I would say, is their inability to keep the ball. They've been garbage in defence and attack, and a lot of it is down to how they keep the ball and how they pass it. If we look at statistics from FB Ref in the Premier League, this is what Newcastle's passes attempted look like. They have the second lowest attempted amount of passes. That is bad, but also they have the third lowest passes completed. Watford is slightly higher than them uh, here. That's for a multitude of reasons. It could be that they're trying to clear the ball long, like Burnley, you know, they try and clear it long quite a lot of the time, try and play quickly from back to front. Newcastle are just bad. They just have not very good players. And they also have a pass completion rate of about 73.8%. When I say about, it's exactly what they have. That is also not good. So what they've done is taken steps to try and address this by bringing in uh, players like Bruno Guimaraes. Now, Guimaraes is a Brazilian uh, central midfielder. He's mostly a six, described as like a six plus because he can play in the sort of eight role as well. But he's definitely going to fit into this part of the Newcastle's team. They've been playing a 4-3-3 under, uh, under Eddie Howe recently. And what you have now is a midfield that will probably include Joe Willick as a kind of marauding eight getting forward to join us in the attacks. And uh, Joe Linton, who is now, <laughs> he's basically like an attack dog. He's like N'Golo Kante. He's moved from being a center forward or a wide left. And his numbers show that he's making a lot of pressures and tackles and things like that. Defensive work basically in midfield. Different kind of player. So that means you've got the, kind of the worker off the ball to win the ball back. You've got Willick giving your sort of between defence and midfield. But this guy is the key because he's going to be the bridge between defence and midfield. And there's a video we did on TIFO IRL about Chris Wood and how he gives him a massive benefit of being able to get the ball from back to front very quickly because he can win headers and knock the ball down. But now they can play comfortably through lines to players like Gimenez and Byrne. Now if you look at Gimenez, whose name I definitely can't say correctly, um, his, according to FB Ref, the players he's most similar to in style are players like Matteo Kovacic, N'Golo Kanti, Thiago Alcantara, Marco Verratti. Basically he's really good, so that's one of the things. But what he can do, what makes him really good, is that he's got ability to play these kind of big switch passes out to the wings. What he'll often do is when the team is up the pitch, you'll find that you know, your wingers are kind of blocked in and there's not a lot of space. But he has this very unique ability that only some of the best players in midfield in the game can actually have, is that he can just take the ball in tight spaces, carry it past someone, and then fire passes into these guys. Like he, he can spot these balls. He spots the, the passes where there is maybe like Joel Linton here. It looks like his pass is not on, but he fires it between them or he finds a way to get that in between here like that. That's his really big skill set, big long switch passes as well. Uh, works hard off the ball, just very good positionally, really cultured player, great in possession. Now, I know what you're thinking, you're thinking, John Joe Shelby's really good at those things as well, isn't he? Well, no, and let me show you. So if we look at Bruno Guimaraes' stats here, this is from FB Ref, and this is their stats comparatively adjusted to the top five leagues, right? So this is uh, this guy versus this guy, John Joe Shelby, already at Newcastle. Now, we know that this guy's a better player, he just is. Um, I can sort of explain why using statistics as well. We look at progressive passes. This is the important one. This is what we're talking about. Newcastle being able to keep the ball, getting the ball up the pitch, retaining it. He's very good at these sorts of things here, the passy bits here. Also, lots of work off the ball, pressures and tackles, interceptions. That's all very decent for the position that he plays. John Joe Shelby, just not quite as good a player. And that is more highlighted if I highlight it by doing that. Now you see... This guy's better. <laughs> this is a big improvement on John Joe Shelby. You can see it with the eye test by watching him as well. This guy's much better in possession, tight spaces. The passes he makes are unbelievably good. Uh, he's just, just a better player. I can't really qualify it more than that. Shelby is now going to be the guy who sits below him in the pecking order, I just want to call it. He could play alongside him as an eight, but that's the sort of thing we have. Now, that is the big thing with signing Bruno Guimaraes, he just improves your midfield instantly. But there's another player who also makes this team better, and that is Dan Byrne. So Dan Byrne 
uh, was like a youth player at Newcastle, didn't quite make it, got rejected as a very young boy, a young, a young loon. Uh, now, he's played at Graham, Graham Potter's Brighton, and he's a ball-playing defender. So Newcastle were, could probably have signed Nat Phillips from Liverpool or James Tarkovsky, but Byrne is a different kind of player in that he is a ball-playing defender. So again, it's very important with his passing stats. So we look at his stats down here, like progressive passes, it's not in the top percentile, but for what you get for a centre back who's six foot seven, therefore very good at either end of the pitch as a as a either set piece clearer or a guy who can get the end of crosses, he's good at these things. And we can highlight the sorts of things that make him good. This guy's a lot better than you think he is. One thing is interesting to consider with defenders is that players like Van Dyke, Virgil Van Dyke, if you go in FV ref, it's all accessible data. Van Dijk's numbers are very low here. Doesn't mean he's bad at them. It's just that if you're a defender in a really good team pressed high up the pitch, like, like your defensive line's right up, you're going to have less to do. So naturally your pressures, your tackles, all those sorts of things will be far lower. Now Dan Byrne's playing for a team who are kind of mid-table-ish Brighton, so he'll be a lot busier. But also because he plays often in a three, he's getting forward more and just doing more on the ball and he plays wide left in defence as well. And if we go back to the tactics board, this is how we can, we can now sort of see this, right? So we put the ball at the goalkeeper and we'll give him a nice yellow arrow. Now suddenly Newcastle have these, like this sort of passing network is open. You've got Byrne, Gamirez, so Byrne can pull out wide to receive the ball from goal kicks in this sort of area. So if you look at old data from Newcastle, what you often see is the ball tends to go from goal kicks from Dubravka to these sorts of areas. So the ball's cleared long from the goal kick, they try and win the ball. The opposition team get onto it, they push up the pitch because it's very hard to control games if you're clearing it long from goal kicks. So, I mean, Chris Wood was signed to sort of help with that. But now they've got the option of playing it short to someone like Byrne. Lascelles can come in here if you want. Gamiris drops in here. So you've got all these different options for passes. Byrne can go here, here, here. Joe Linton can drop in here if you want. Willick, if Shelby plays instead of Joe Linton here, he drops in here. You've got lots of options. Then you've suddenly got players like Gamiris, Byrne from the back. Target is an improvement on the left back we had previously, so now Target can get up and left. He's very good statistically for Aston Villa over the last couple of seasons. Then you've, that means that you've got an overlap here, which gives St. Maxman even more license to become inside, because now the defender has to worry about the overlapping fullback as well as just St. Maxman, so that's really useful. Ryan Fraser can come inside here if he wants to do that sort of thing over in this bit here. Kieran Trippier we know is just a great fullback, so he's going to provide crosses for Chris Wood or Callum Wilson, whoever's playing in the middle here. but. The important bit is you've got Joe Linton Willick. The midfield is now instantly improved because this triangle of players is so much better than anything Newcastle have had for the last while. Right, so this is going to be, we're going to look at the whole network, passing network from the back. Obviously, no team tends to ever look like this because there's way too much vertical space. It would just be insane. But if you have Dubravka to here, then you can go into Gimenez. And suddenly he can either play out to St. Maximin as a long ball, he can get out to Fraser here, he can play out to Trippier, out to here. He can do all these things while other players can get in position to receive more balls out of him. It's just, there's so much more they can do with this guy than they could do with Shelby before, or Isaac Hayden, or... I mean, Sean Longstaff, they're all okay players, but they're not the level Newcastle want to be. He makes them so much better and is a massive buy. But just with Byrne being able to pass out from the back, give a bit of defensive stability, it makes Newcastle much, much better in possession, which should make their statistics improve dramatically for ball retention, ball progression, and uh, that should just make them a better team. So spending £92 million, which is, I think, about the same as Mike Ashley has ever spent on all his transfers combined, is going to make them a much better team. And uh, that's Newcastle. It should be all right now, maybe. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. And if you do enjoy TIFO, then you'll probably also like The Athletic. If you watch our tactics videos, you should go and read Michael Cox. If you're into data, read Mark Carey. And if you're into transfers, it's David Ornstein. Plus, if you're a fan of any Premier League team, then there's a journalist dedicated to you. And you can try it for free for 30 days now by clicking the link in the description.